Talent and tradition converge in Colorado on the ball fields at Christopher Fields in Westminster. And we look forward to seeing each of these talented players on the field. For the Firecrackers, they will play defense to start. And their pitcher, Megan Kleist, here is pitch one of the National Power Showdown. This is down and out. Kleist has ball one on the board. Kleist pitching here in this first inning to her catcher, Genevieve Perez. Perez behind the plate. Taylor Lynch, left side hitting, slaps it toward her own third base dugout, 62 miles per hour from Kleist on the pitch. Now a 1-1 count. And there is a good look at Megan Kleist. Wisconsin is the home state for Megan, and she gets to play with the Firecrackers in California. Not a bad opportunity. Now, opportunity for her to play around the country, play for one of the best programs and coaches in the country. The thing you love about Kleist is the fact that She's a 2015 grad, but already verbaled to Mike White and Oregon. So a very talented pitcher. Working down and away on the first three pitches and goes there again, Monica. This lefty leading off Taylor Lynch and Kleist has gone nowhere close to the middle of the plate. Yeah, you see her just continuously going to that outside corner using that drop ball. That's one of her go-to pitches. We expect to see that a lot in trying to induce some ground balls here. Let the firecracker defense make some plays for her. The 3-1 pitch. That gets a lot of the plate and fouled away by Taylor Lynch. We go full on the first batter of the game, 3-2 count. Here comes that full count pitch leadoff batter in this showdown of a couple of top five teams in the country according to the National Club softball rankings. And Taylor Lynch, good leadoff batter has seen six pitches now in this leadoff at bat. Great job by a leadoff, a leadoff batter. You know, you want to see as many pitches as you can, get a good idea of, of how the pitcher's throwing today. Taylor out of Red Oak, Texas, did want to comment and uh, give our thoughts and wishes out to the family. I know the maternal grandpa passed away recently in the Taylor Lynch family. And so uh, I don't know Taylor, a little bit of a heavy heart and wants to dedicate something today to grandpa. And Taylor draws the walk, a seven-pitch visit to the plate. So a great start for Texas Glory. It's funny, you call that a great start. It's not uh, a rocket to the gap mm -hmm. for a double. It's not a bomb. It's nothing but seven pitches and a runner on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as a pitcher, you know, you never want to put the leadoff, the leadoff hitter in a game. You know, you, you don't want to put her on base. But, you know, you got to go with your strengths. And she, she battled all the way. Fundamental softball being played with the bunt. Out of the number two batter, 60 mile per hour pitch is fouled away on the bunt by Madison Kettler. There you see Madison nicknamed Crash. <laughs> what, a great, gotta have one of what, a, what a great nickname. Every team needs one Crash. <laughs> and they, they've got theirs in Madison Kettler. She's out, of, she's out of West Texas. We saw Madison last year, and uh, of course, a year ago was when West Texas had just gone through a big challenge. You know, Madison was called out. I think she must have been out of the box on the contact there. Mm -hmm. They just sent her away and changed the batter out. So the Bunt attempt won't pay off. Lynch still down at first and one away. This pitch rides to that outer edge. Great spot. Well, if you're going to get that spot today, Michelle, go there all day long. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about painting the corners, putting the ball uh, on the outside part of the plate or underneath the hands and not being predictable. Seeing Kleist like to hammer that outside corner lefties into righties and staying on the outside corner again. I think that one of the things you see with a lot of young pitchers is they have the ability to usually hit one side of the plate very well and take a look at this is the last batter looks like her foot was still on the line the foot has to be completely out of the box to be out but it looks like the umpire decided that a extra hitter Kettler was out of the box and therefore recorded you know out. I think maybe what happened there is those are some fat lines maybe the umpire <laughs> thought you know they're giving a little too much on the chalk today we're not going to let that much happen so it was good look at that by the way from our crew and a, an out recorded on Kettler's call out on the out of the box call. So we've got one away and a runner on first. This is Ariel Ortiz, the shortstop for Texas Glory. Ariel taking her first turn in the box today in this big matchup. Two two count up on the board to Ariel. Chops one, left side, bounces through to short. There's an out at two. Fielder's choice 
Six to four on the put out for the Firecrackers. That's Taylor Van Zee over at third base. Decided to yield that ball and let her shortstop Nicole Bates make the play, throwing it out over to Nicole DeWitt. Well, it's an outside off-speed pitch. Ortiz just gets around it and hits it toward the 5-6 hole, but a really good job by the Firecracker defense to get the lead out. Bates going into that 5-6 hole and converting that out over to DeWitt at second. Fresh count, started off with a strike. 0-1 to the number four batter, Morgan Tercoli. Tercoli playing left field to start the game for the glory. She's got a teammate on at first. That's Ariel Ortiz, who reached on the fielder's choice. And Tercoli would love to make the first dent in this matchup. Nice spot there from Kleist, didn't get the down call. Saw Morgan Tercoli out of Sanger, Texas. I want to thank her family and friends and coaches for their support throughout her fast pitch and larger life endeavors. Here Tercoli sends one to the foul fence. And she's got a one and two count, two outs. So a good spot here for the pitcher, Megan Kleist, and the Firecrackers defense. Just heard it from Amanda moments ago, 9-0 recently when these two teams met. The team yeah. batting right now, Texas Glory, won that game 9-0. So a zero frame in the top of the first would be welcomed by the Firecrackers. Chop to the middle, played up and across. And the Firecrackers leave a zero on the board in the top of the first as the shortstop Bates throws it to the first baseman Blanco. Firecrackers bat next. Monique Garcia, who hails from Lubbock, Texas. Monique will start it off in the circle for the Texas Glory. And she will pitch in this first inning to Aubrey Turbeville doing the catching. Garcia's first pitch here in the bottom of the first. She goes to the same spot that Kleist was using and gets ball one. A lot of young pitchers know that the hardest pitch to hit is typically the outside corner and I always like to tell young pitchers, when in doubt, throw a low and out, and uh, you see it a lot. It takes a lot of patience for hitters to let that ball get deep and drive it the opposite way. Now pitch number two was fantastic. There's Taylor Van Zee. Good look at Taylor, who is, uh, well, she's had a great high school age career, and she's about to embark on more great things. We'll talk more about that. I love that second pitch by Garcia. She just moved it in just a little bit, and then she did it again. So the first pitch, ball one, she was out by, eh. Second pitch, she just moved it about, uh. And those are strikes. Yeah, great adjustment by uh, Monique Garcia. You know, that sometimes that's the most important thing. This softball's a game of inches, and especially when you're a pitcher, you got to continue to work the ball out. And Z will hustle down the line, and the throw sailing will be a safe on the short game. Van Z slaps it down to third, and the throw just enough to pull first baseman Daniela Chavez off the bag. Van Z is on board. Mentioned Van Z with opportunity in her career, and She's headed off to uh, University of Washington as her college opportunity. Well, Vanzi with a lot of speed is going to get down the line. We always talk about how it is tough to defend speed. So the Firecrackers right away at that leadoff position get Vanzi on base, and they are in business. Now the number two batter for Firecrackers takes strike one. It's Tara Blanco, and we've seen Tara do some pitching for her Firecrackers team, and she's playing first base today. Tara headed to Michigan for her collegiate Softball. That comes inside, one and one. Countless check in down at the field with Amanda Scarborough. Well, we saw Taylor Banzi just put the ball on the ground to the left side, and that's something that Tony Rico, head coach of the Firecrackers, really stresses to his lefty hitters to be able just to put pressure on the defense. And whether even if they're not the fastest person on the team, if you have a little bit of speed, that is the one thing that he stresses for these left-handed hitters. Just put the ball in play, put pressure on the defense. And that's really his left-handed motto. Amanda does not have a monitor down at the field, so I'm going to put the pressure on her. She's got to make, she's the official scorer on that. Amanda, hit or error on Van Z's ball? Ooh, um, I think I would have counted that as an error. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. <laughs> Whoa, that. it's a sweep. It's a clean sweep. But this we're ball all pitchers. Up. <laughs> That's right. All the pitchers said error. 
I'm saying in a in a nationally uh, in a televised showdown game. This isn't an all-star game. This is a straight square off game. Now in our all-American game next on CBS Sports Network, that's a hit. And most most everything is a hit, probably. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. I'm going to go with your call. Amanda gets the official call, and she gets the support of Michelle and Monica. So we'll go with the E5 on the wide throw that pulled first base off the bat. Great throw down and erase that error from behind the plate for the glory. It's Aubrey Turbeville gunning Van Zee at second. Well, Turbeville's going to get a pitch that's tough to throw on, but she guns it down. Shortstop Ortiz coming over and is in time. That's one of the keys. You have to have the middle infielders at the bag in time for that throw to arrive. So a really good job of getting that runner, especially the lead runner with a lot of speed out. So the Texas Glory in business with their defensive play. Now, I agree with what you were, as you were watching that replay, Michelle, I, I was expecting a better pitch that she threw on yeah. when you look at that. That was, no, was she had to reach, yeah. little dirt popped, and she still got it made the throw. Yeah, and what a great adjustment she made. She, you notice she threw from one knee on that. She, she didn't try and do too much with it, stayed low through her knees and used her upper body and core strength to make that throw. Blanco battles away, heads down the right field line. That'll bounce just foul and leave the count at 2-2. Blanco ripped a line drive foul on the left side and then ended up to the right side with that next foul ball spraying it all over the park. Here's Van Z, gets her break and checks, does a little stutter step, and then she's thrown out at the bag. It almost looks like it potentially could have been a hit and run, button run, something with that hesitation. If you're stealing, no hesitation. You have to continue to go. Even if it's a button run or hit and run, it's still your responsibility to run that as if it's a, a stolen base. Blanco getting a nice D-bat bat, two and two count. Getting some quality hacks. This one is blasted to the left field side, and it will end up foul. Got the temporary fences out there. There's a, a stake in the ground. I think they might have found oil down there, too. They've got a few <laughs> things going on in the landscape. And uh, that was uh, challenging navigation out in left field. Poking around was Morgan Turkley, and that ball drops foul. Torcoli, I think she's trying to figure out, am I allowed to be out here? I'm beyond the other side of the fence. That was a, whole, that was a foul home run. You're it right. was, yeah. She's like, can I catch this? Is are, this my feet, are my feet in play? <laughs> so Turcoli needs to stay ready, though. Blanco getting some great swings on pitches here from Monique Garcia. Gets another pretty good swing, sends it to right. After a good, long, tough at-bat by Blanco, she will fly out to right field. Madison Montgomery with the catch. Hey, don't throw a no Twitter during today's game. Use hashtag TC Sports. Fans are tweeting from the bleachers. Monica, Michelle, Amanda might tweet right here from the booth in the field during the game. Players could even throw out a tweet from the dugouts. You can get in the game using hashtag TC Sports. Speaking of uh, tweeting and hashtagging, and let me get uh, Amanda Sanchez introduced. Amanda stepping into the box, the number three batter. We saw her last year impress in the box and look forward to watching her hit again today for strike one. Speaking of the tweets and the, and the hashtagging and all that, Monday night, I know both of you were part of, uh, and we can talk about it throughout the course of today's broadcast, the Champions Festival, which is a great opportunity for the young players and for the experienced players who are up on the panels to interact. This ball's bombed to center and gone. Well, we said it, Sanchez can hit. And there is video evidence. Amanda Sanchez, first run on the board, solo shot. Sanchez, just a pretty swing. Very compact, explosive. Gets that ball to jump off the bat. Take a look at the location of this pitch all over the white part of the bat, excuse me, plate. But the thing that I love that Sanchez does, she allows that ball to get deep in the zone. Great effort by Zimmerman out in center field going over the fence. But that ball just hammered by Sanchez. Just textbook hitting on the outside pitch. Let's that ball get deep in the zone and just attacks it. There's Amanda high-fiving in the dugout. The first run of the game is a solo shot. So remember Van Z was thrown out stealing on a great throw by Monique Garcia. Garcia did her part to mm -hmm. cut that home run damage in half, make it a one-run blast. But the uh, Firecrackers and the Glory Stay ready for that all day long. That, the ball can be traveling, and we are in Colorado. Yes, yes. there's a little, a little lighter here. So now it's Genevieve Perez, the catcher for the Firecrackers, with two down and one across. And Perez, first pitch swinging, blasted foul 
left side 57 miles per hour on the pitch from Monique Garcia. Here comes the second pitch of the first inning at bat to Perez painting the outside edge quickly two strikes good recovery by Monique Garcia getting right back to the advantage yeah absolutely it's so important as a pitcher after you give up a big hit especially a home run you know you want to come back and attack the next hitter and show that your defense like hey I'm okay we're gonna get this run back put your team in a chance to come back well and that was one of the questions during the champions festival that was asked of a lot of the pitchers like how do you come back from a, a home run or a giving up a hit yeah and I think Michelle you talked about um practicing giving up that kind of that mentality during your practice preparing yourself off the field out of a game for those moments tough play in the hole not in time Genevieve Perez hits it to the what Tony Gwynn liked to call the 5.5 .5 hole <laughs> and she legs it out infield single Perez is on base and Perez just gets around this ball hits it into that 5-6 hole and you can see the way that Ortiz is going to have to go way across the infield but Perez runs very well. Yeah, she did a great job about getting out of the box and just getting her head down and getting those first two steps. So Perez earns the on base. Chalk it up as a single. We're not going to go to the sc official score on that. I know, you know, a landslide vote on the air in the first inning. That's clearly a base hit. Yeah. Clearly. clearly. No debate. <laughs> no debate. Uh, okay, no we're going <laughs> to leave that in the books as a, it looks great in the books for Genevieve. <laughs> we'll just, she can think of it as a, a rocket to center. It's all a hit. Uh, you Line know, drive to center or, you know, infield base hit, it's all a hit. All the same. All the same. Nicole DeWitt playing second base to start this game for the Firecrackers is the batter. She's batting in the number five spot. Puts it down and bounces out to Garcia. Ball is called either foul or dead and out. Looks like they're going to call it foul. She was still in the box when it contacted DeWitt. So instead of being thrown out one to three, DeWitt will head back and try again. Came off her knee, maybe, Michelle. Yeah, it looks like the ball goes down yeah. and pops off of her foot while she's still in the box, so it's just simply a foul ball. Nicole, University of Florida in her plans, a 2014 grad. Congratulations on the recent tassel turn and getting ready to head out to play for the Gators. Here she will go down on a 41-mile-per-hour finish. But the first run of the board, Amanda Sanchez out of West Covina, California, and the University of Missouri, glad to see their recruit put it out of the yard at the Sparkler Fireworks National Power Showdown. Extreme care for their customers and exceeded my expectations with artwork, final product, and customer service. Here's to creating the perfect pin, ghpins.com. Thanks to GH Pins and the whole family at GH for their ongoing partnership. The Triple Crown Sports, Maddie Sue Montgomery. Madison, the full name, but Maddie Sue to those who have gotten on the inner circle. And she'll single. Madison Montgomery playing right field defensively, steps into the box and delivers a base hit. That's the first hit for the glory. A pitch that's up in the zone. Madison is just going to attack it. Love the way that... She has that great backside rotation, doesn't try to do too much with the pitch, just pumps it and drives it right back up the middle. So now it's Daniela Chavez playing first base today. Bunt popped it a little bit, got down to the dirt though, successful on the Sacrifice effort, moving the runner, runner along. Montgomery down to second base on the bunt by Chavez. Well, the firecrackers always very strong defensively. I love the way that they're coming in. Yanetti is coming into Garcia and six, excuse me, the third baseman coming in. Van Ease comes in and calls off Kleist, the pitcher. Make sure they record the out, so important. Genevieve Perez, the catcher. Got the mask up, a little quarterbacking. And Madison Yanetti playing third base for her defense. Will get her first at bat here in the top of the second. Strike one. And Michelle, you mentioned Van Zee calling off the pitcher. 
Among other reasons, Van Zee, obviously a yeah. defender. The pitcher is less of, considered to be less of a defender, but another big point for a young player there is angles to the play. Absolutely. That's probably the most important one is that it's going to be quicker for the third baseman coming across the infield to be able to pick that ball up, potentially get the out at second, which is always what you want to do, get the lead runner. But if you don't have that, then obviously following your energy flow toward first base, it's much easier for that third baseman. Here comes an 0-2 pitch from Megan Kleist, pitching her second inning for the Firecrackers in this showdown. Heads outside with that one and two. And, Monica, we're seeing 61-62 consistently mm -hmm. on the radar gun. How do you feel about that from the young pitcher? I think that's good. Um, you know, what I'm really impressed on is how aggressive these pitchers are right now. They're going out and they're trying to get first pitch strikes. And even when they're falling behind, they're coming straight back with strikes. And they're forcing those girls to hit that outside corner. Van Z, nice play on a soft pit, uh, soft hit. Talked about 61, 62, 48 miles per hour. That's the beauty when a young yeah. pitcher knows how to speed change and get that kind of a result off the bat. You know, hitting's all, pitching's all about messing up hitters' timing and getting, getting uh, the hitters to just hit the ball badly. And sometimes the best success is when your defense makes a play. Here comes Aubrey Turbeville, the catcher for Texas Glory. Her team now facing a two-out situation, but a runner on third. Runner moved along there, did Montgomery. So Montgomery takes third base with two down and chance to tie it up here, 1-0. The defense, the Firecrackers on top. The Glory with their second turn with the sticks. Good chance to even it up. Turboville bounces this towards short. Ball stays down. It played nicely. Blanco with the catch over at first on the throw from Nicole Bates. Firecrackers out clean again. They lead 1-0, heading to the bottom of the second in Colorado. Now what a festival going on around the ball fields here. That shot you're seeing right there is just part of the fray back here. There are vendors everywhere. We got we got uh, like uh, funnel cakes and elephant ears and uh, there's ice cream right there. Yummy. Uh, pretzels, I see those over there. And uh, softball, both equipment and then all the extra accoutrements like uh, hair bows and uh, nail and stuff and all that good stuff. But a uh, true festival here at Christopher Fields in Westminster, Colorado. Thad Anderson with Monica Abbott. That's right, Monica's here. Hello. Michelle Smith. No, I'm not kidding. Michelle's here, too. That's Heck, right. we even got ourselves an Amanda Scarborough. She's down talking to the Firecrackers in their first base dugout right now. But Michelle, Monica, Amanda, all three of you, thank you for being with us uh, again as we've done for the last few years. And Michelle, for you, for uh, many years. Yep. We won't say how many because that would date all of us. Date us <laughs> tremendously. <laughs> but we, we appreciate you uh, being here. And I know, I know it's, it's fun. Uh, but we still know it takes some time out of your life. So thanks for doing yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, I love the fact that we get to see these kids before they – don their college uniforms and uh, I think this year it was fun to see Bailey Castro who's consistently uh, been a great uh, hitter for the University of Florida just won a national championship but she was with the Gold Coast Hurricanes for many years we got to see her on uh, at this tournament so it's, a, it's always a lot of fun to see these rising stars absolutely yeah, as we mentioned the schools that these players are going to be going to in the next year next couple of years I mean it's a, it's it's the who's who of yep. who you're going to see in Oklahoma City and we saw several players this year who just came out of our games last year and you know kids like Janelle Linval yep. and you got all these you know I love watching these players get out there and, and the way they fit in the, the preparation at this level you can see it when they get that college level they you know they might miss a beat but they don't miss, miss many beats getting right. uh, getting grooved in we've got Sammy Vandiver at the plate Sammy's leading off the bottom of the second for the firecrackers who lead 1-0 one, 1-2 one, count Vandiver fights one off into left good running catch out in left field and the out recorded on the fly out by Vandiver double checking and it looks like out in left field that is still Morgan Tercoli. We know there's gonna be some substitutions going on so I'm a little hesitant because we're not sure who's come in when but Tercoli good running effort across from left to center. Had that crisscross traffic coming from her center fielder Erica Zimmerman and we couldn't hear it here but I'm sure there was some communication going on between those two as they went into the Blue Angels formation. Here's a laydown oh. grab in right field. The glove put on it on the line drive from Allie Wester. It's a line out to right into the glove of Madison Montgomery. Well, Wester is going to get all into this ball in the inside corner. Great backside rotation gets extended. Quick follow through. But the effort in right field, Madison Montgomery going down to make that catch. 
That's an outstanding bit of defense out there in right field. Firecrackers hammering away. This will be the third ball hit into the outfield and the third out in three batters. That one sent from Nicole Bates. Bates sends it out to left to Coley again, but the catch of the inning, Madison Montgomery helping her defense and the glory back to the bats, down by one. We'll kick off the top of the third inning with Kaylee Eisenberg. Kaylee started as the DP today. Kaylee's first at bat. And she'll take strike one. Kaylee batting the number nine spot for the glory. Pretty efficient first couple of innings for Megan Kleist. She's had traffic both innings, but not too much danger. When the runner reached third last inning, that was when the second out was made on a ground out, and Montgomery moved up to third. So third base with two down, uh, one shot maybe so yeah. far, you know, but, but a, not a great shot with a pitcher in defense like the Firecrackers have. Glory really haven't gotten a huge threat, but to be honest, the Firecrackers haven't even other, e either other than that one deep ball by Sanchez. Well, the last loss the, you know, the Firecrackers took against the Glory, there were a lot of self-induced mistakes, and that's one of the things that coaches the Glory talked about that chances are wasn't going to happen in this game. There's a strike call on the appeal down to first. Here's a look. All right, we're going to our, we're going to our official eyeballs. I'm going to say she didn't go. Monica's going to give it the, the yeah. held back. Michelle? Yeah, it looked like the, the bat stayed back, but, y you know, a lot of it has to do with your body language. And, if mm -hmm. you know, if you, you pull that back back and be like, no, 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 help out the umpire a little bit, sometimes you get the call, but in that case you don't. This ball chopped down and foul from Erica Zimmerman, the center fielder Zimmerman now batting with one out after the strikeout. Now, let me ask you this, because I, 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 I don't really know the answer to this one. I'm not okay. setting you up at all. <laughs> When a, when a player attempts to check a swing, have you noticed if it's a high check versus a low check, do umpires see that differently sometimes? Have you noticed a spot where you check at that maybe looks less like a swing than another spot? Um, I find that inside pitches usually you get strikes on on a check a little bit more than, say, an outside pitch. But it kind of varies on the umpire. I, I always like to call even though go to ask for them to check, even if – I know they didn't swing because I just want to make sure that, you know, everyone's paying attention for the next one that I do get that check swing on, you know? <laughs> You're setting up for the next. <laughs> exactly. I'm preparing him. I'm preparing the umpires. Erica Zimmerman batting here with a 2-1 count. Michelle, have you noticed anything on check swing calls at, over your years of throwing? No, not really. I think a lot of it has to do as well with the catcher, how the catcher um, catches the ball, making sure they're not standing up, especially on a high pitch and, and interfering at the eye level of the umpire. So all those little things can make a big difference. But I think it's really important always for the um, the battery to ask, you know, for help down the lines and, and even for hitters, you know, at times. Typically the hitter never gets it though. They never yeah. get any help. Well and as our producer Martin Tarr pointed out while you were talking, you, between you two and Amanda, I'm sure every every even Close to swing was always a full swing, not a check <laughs> swing, right? There's, the umpires got it wrong if they didn't ring it up, <laughs> as you said before. You know, that, that's probably an error in the books. It was, that wasn't a hit. That was an error. <laughs> and that was, yes, that was a, they, she went around, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that was a full-blown swing. So on the left side of the plate here, Zimmerman with her 2-2 count facing Megan Kleist. Kleist, that's her leaning on the 51-mile-per-hour pitch, staying yeah. alive, Zimmerman. Great way, to, great job about keeping her hands back on that off-speed pitch there. Just enough to foul it and keep herself alive. Something I love about these games and these these caliber, this caliber of teams we see when we do these games. It's a number 10 batter right here. Just fouled off what her third, fourth, maybe fifth pitch of this at bat, and she's hitting the 10 spot. This is a player who could go to a lot of teams and bat wherever she wanted probably. She's playing on a team that probably challenges her, gives her exposure to things that she wouldn't see elsewhere, and that's what is great about these groups is you could you could probably move these batting orders around anywhere you wanted and every player would perform in them. Here comes the 2-2, chopped, going to be a quick toss, and just in time, making the play from short over to first. It's Nicole Bates to Tara Blanco, and after a good lengthy at-bat, Zimmerman retired. Nicole Bates, just great range, great ability to come in, throw off the run. She's been very impressive in that shortstop position. Look at the way she's going to charge this ball. No hesitation. 
Her movement from fielding the ground ball to throwing is all one. It's not two separated movements. It's all one. Very efficient. Yeah. Love how the footwork is done before the ball's even fielded. Yep. That ball was out of her glove before she even hit her glove, I think. <laughs> her feet were done, and she was into the throwing motion on contact with Leather. 0-1 oh count. We're back to the top of the order now with Taylor Lynch. Taylor drew a walk to lead off this game in the top of the first and then was retired on a fielder's choice out at second base. And Lynch, we end up deciding that was a seven pitch at bat her last time. She's back in the box now with two away. And let's check back in with Amanda Scarborough. Well, the Firecrackers are really big on just simple, fundamental softball. So you notice that play that Nicole Bates just made coming across the diamond. She's not too flashy. She just tries to be efficient and take care of business. Van Z throws high, and the tag not in time. So safe is the call down at one. Lynch, Blanco definitely off the bag, but Blanco laid the glove on the runner. So I'm sure we'll get a great look. Our crew's had some good looks all day. Let's see what happened. Here she goes. Good hustle. Tough angle. I think the call's correct. She just kind of got in there. Glove's a little bit late, but still a heads up play by Tara Blanco coming coming down with that glove to try and give her team a chance. So I, I, I don't, we're not going to New York for the official replay review on this one yeah, uh, as, as per one. MLB. Tight call there and uh, on this one it's going to be a safe call and like you said Monica that was that was bang bang when the glove made contact. I don't know if the uh, foot was down yet or not but could have gone either way and you know bottom line I'm sure what Taylor Van Zee is thinking over at third base is I got to make that throw. I pulled her Absolutely. off the bag. And yeah. That, that call is what it is because of my throw. Yeah, that, that ball's hit right to her. She doesn't have to go down on her knees. She's not diving and getting up. That ball's hit right at her. She needs to be able to make that, that throw a little bit sharper right at the chest of her first baseman. Well, we have a second here. Jackie Crafter, our home plate umpire out of Australia, calls a strike here on this pitch riding to the outside, 62 miles per hour. Crafter behind the plate. Steven Tabiendo at third base, and Willie Patterson out of New Mexico had to make this call. Yeah, and gosh. woo. No, it looks like the tag yeah. is in time, but that's tough. You know, it makes me glad I'm not an umpire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even with the uh, – you can still debate that even with review mm -hmm. a couple times. Perez clears on the drop third strike or the bouncing third strike. Nice work by Genevieve to hang on to the third out. Throw down to first to Blanco, and the strikeout pitch from Kleist ends the top of the third and leaves the glory with zero runs. Firecrackers up by one. Back to the bats in Colorado. Glory will continue with Monique Garcia in the circle. She will pitch against the first at bat of the day for Alyssa Hereshko. The right fielder, Hereshko, swings on pitch one, chops it to short, and beats it. Runner on base to lead it off for the Firecrackers. Great job by Hereshko to get this ball down with a ton of speed. Look at the way she's very efficient in a running motion, quick turnover. Great job in that nine spot to turn over the lineup to bring the top of the order back up. Alyssa Hereshko on base uh, told us she, she'd like to work at Google later in life. I suppose uh, it's not a bad one. If you're going to pick somewhere to work, pick somewhere that employs, I don't know, six billion people. I don't yeah. know what they yeah. have now. So Alyssa, Alyssa on base, hoping her immediate future includes a run scored to put her team up 2-0. Been playing softball since she was six years old. Alyssa down at first. And there's Taylor Van Zee back at the top of the order. Infield single her first time up. And that throw out on the steal try. She was caught by Turboville. Going to try the long way out to second and out recorded. Horexco goes in hard and the play is made on the five to four put out. What an aggressive, an aggressive throw by Madison Yanati. Doesn't even think twice, goes straight to second base on that. And takes away that lead runner. Yanetti quickly up with it and gunning it to Taylor Lynch. And Lynch had to hang in against the slide, the aggressive finish out there by Horexco. Now this ball blasted by Blanco. Line shot to center. Handled out there on defense by Zimmerman and two down. This inning has felt like a threat, but mm -hmm. at this point now two down and runner on first. Glory in pretty good shape. It's one of the harder things to write in a scorebook too is 
L8 line out yeah. to eight. You know, it's, oh, yeah. hit that so well. Yeah. But Zimmerman well positioned and smooth over the ball, playing on that giant red, white, and blue star out in center field here at Christopher Fields. Amanda Sanchez accounted for the only run of this game with her home run out over the head of Zimmerman, who crashed through the fence and couldn't quite haul it in. Sanchez, the lefty, there's a look at it from the first inning. Blasting away the only run on the board here in the bottom of the third, a seven inning game in this National Power Showdown. Amanda, the wide open lefty stance, looks at a pitch outside. From a pitcher's perspective, either of you, I will let you both chime in on this. Do stances, maybe, you know, whether it's for you or not or for pitchers you work with, do open stances, closed stances mess with a pitcher much, especially maybe a younger pitcher? When a, bat, when a hitter's really moving around, you know, closing off the front side, this, you know, Sanchez here goes way wide open. Does it, does it look different as a vantage point to the plate or to the target? No, I, I, well, I think every time you do one action in one way or the other, it exposes you. So I would probably attack right at the feet, right at the knees on this yeah. particular situation. I used to hit like this as well. So, it, you know, a lot of it, too, if you throw a pitch and they really foul it off or they miss it or they drive it down the line, you're like, ooh, okay, maybe I'm not going to go there again. Right. Yeah, you know, you learn pitch to pitch. But for me, Thad, no, it really didn't affect me a whole lot. Exactly. Yeah. One thing you assume is that Sanchez is going to have to dive in with that front foot. So if you break, if you really bust her in at her knees, is it harder for her if she's got the momentum coming toward the plate than to get back inside? Yeah, you would think that would be the case. She gets her front foot down early, so really the key is is what that front foot is doing. If it's down late, you usually have a hitter nailed. If it's down early, they're going to see the ball well. Mm -hmm. This ball lifted out in the same vicinity of the home run ball, but not as deep this time. And the left fielder out there, Morgan Tercoli, puts it away. We're through three innings. Firecrackers lead 1-0. And uh, you can see it in his players, and they never give up. They just, you know, and this is this is what military's about. You you have to be strict. You have to follow the rules, and you just never give up. You just don't give up. And how did you get involved with the firecrackers and meeting Tony? Well, about eight years ago, I met Tony. I found out that I was in the South Pacific, uh, in the Philippines, 1944 and 45. His father was in the Philippines the same time I was. So that's why he has a thing for us World War II veterans. Uh, his father had been gone quite a while. I'm pretty lucky to be standing here. I'm 89 years old now, and I'm the only one left from our outfit that's still alive. So there was 240 in our battalion, and only 158 of us made it back. So I'm pretty fortunate to be standing here. And every time you come to Colorado, you get a chance to talk to the team. Well, which I live here in Colorado Springs. I'm originally from Minnesota. They've been from Minnesota, <laughs> Norwegian and Swedes, you know, but I'm a full-blooded German. What's your favorite part about getting a chance to talk to the team every time they come to Colorado? Well, it's Tony's request. He wants them to understand that, forget the, the, uh, oh, the movie stars, you know, like John Wayne, you know, there's no glory to war. There's no glory at all. It's horrible. And I just hope these kids never have to go through it. The horrible things you see at 19 and 20 years old. It's terrible. And people have no idea how we suffer. But that, as far as the honor thing, you, you, in the military, you always have to, you always have to work with honor, always. Well, thanks so much for your service, and thanks for being here. You're welcome. That's great input, and we wish everybody around the world. I know it's not everybody's holiday, but uh, Independence Day, and time to think about what's going on in your before and what could go on in your future. And Pretty nice touch there, 89 years of age and out here at the ballpark. I was going to say, I, wish, you know, I hope I'm that with it when I'm that age. I wish I was that with it now. <laughs> I'd take that, too. We're into our second batter here of the top of the fourth. It was Ariel Ortiz grounding out to shortstop and a pretty good play out there by Nicole Bates, a funky hop on the ball, and she had to really come up high to make the play. Bates stuck right with it, made the throw to Blanco for the first out, and now it's Morgan Tercoli batting from the left side. Tercoli grounded out to short her first time. Here she hits one to second, and infield hit. Knocked down, kept on the infield by Nicole DeWitt, but a single in the books for Tercoli. 
This ball up in the zone, but Tricoli is going to get on top of that ball and just drive it down, back up the middle. Great job of getting that barrel through the ball. Tricoli batting the number four spot, demonstrating some speed and some contact abilities. The glory with a runner on and one out, trailing by one run in the top of the fourth inning. This ball shot over shortstop and we'll get a little bit of the gap. Runner rounding, throw from the shortstop is up and hit for slide safe. Tercoli from first base on the gapper. The RBI delivered by Madison Montgomery. What a great gutsy decision by Coach Shelton at third base. He sees the bobble and he sends her all the way. No hesitation by him rounding. Here's the bobble. You see them making the good connection there, but she goes all the way, no doubt, that she's going to score. Perez out in front makes the catch and the head first reach around slide by Tercoli ties the game at one. Well, Madison Montgomery just charges that ball. Second hit of the afternoon for her. She's been on fire, finds the gap. So just great job by the glory to get some run production here in the fourth inning. So it's Daniela Chavez in the box now. Taking ball one, and Amanda is still out there working for us. Amanda? Well, I talked to Kevin Shelton in between innings before his team went up to bat. He said he really liked his lefties' approach up at the plate. He said they're doing a good job. They don't need to change a thing. And their lefties are really coming through. But where he wanted his righties to make an adjustment was to be more aggressive, hit early. He said she's getting ahead of us, and she's doing the same thing every single time. We need to hit early in the count. So look for the righties to be the ones that come up and make adjustments later on. The pitch misses down and away, and mm -hmm. now a three ball count and a time taken here. Perez will go out to the circle and talk to Megan Kleist with a runner on third base. Score that, and we'll call it a double for Montgomery. Moved up on the throw home, and the run scored, tied the game, and now Montgomery represents the go ahead run down there with one out here in the top of the fourth. And Amanda, who just uh, checked in with us, by the way, we just don't want you to feel left out later. So, in the last inning or so here, a uh, vegetable tray and some pistachios broke out here in the booth. So feel free to come by anytime, Amanda. You're welcome to join us for the, uh, the smorgasbord of activity. We, we had a pistachio and vegetable fight with uh, some of the players sitting in the, in the bleachers a minute ago, chucking stuff back and forth at each other. I don't like tomatoes, so I was firing uh -huh. tomatoes at them. But no. uh, Amanda, I want to make sure you know you're, you're welcome to the food up here. Dad, you don't know how much I appreciate that because I think like every softball player, I'm a player who likes to eat a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just happens. So thank you for that offer. Well, I appreciate you, it. You've got a long night of work. We've got our National Power Showdown and the doubleheader tonight, also the All-American game feature, and you'll be working the dugouts and bleachers. And so maybe in game two we'll work on some burgers or steaks up here. But right now it's vegetables and pistachios. <laughs> Stay ready. Now a 3-2 count battling back Kleist after falling into a 3-0 hole here against Daniela Chavez. Yeah, he's got a chance to punch her out. And that will score the go-ahead run. Chavez, the RBI single. And the second run of the game plated by Madison Montgomery. On the key for Chavez on this one is that the infield for the Firecrackers has to be in with the runner at third with one out. Nice effort by Bates to go down and try and keep that ball on the infield, but just out of reach. So Danielle Chavez picking up an RBI single puts the glory on top, two to one. Both those runs scored here in the fourth inning and there's one down. Chavez is going to give way for a runner. Chavez playing first base today. It looks like the runner who's checked in over there at first base for Texas Glory is Morgan Grappi. So Morgan now getting her chance to run and her team now up by one. She'd like to make it a plus two here. And instead the line out, Blanco. Oh, I mentioned ice cream a minute ago. There's a snow cone on the field. Blanco flags down a shot and doubles off Grappe to end the inning. But the glory with two in the top of the fourth take the lead up two to one. More damage might have been done. Blanco's defense keeps it a one run ball game to the bottom of the fourth in Colorado. TC Sports. As has become tradition. Packed house. 
Crowd getting pumped up as Monique Garcia sends in the first pitch at the bottom of the fourth. It's ball one to the cleanup batter, Genevieve Perez, the catcher for the Firecrackers. 58 miles per hour, 58 on that first pitch of the fourth inning from Garcia. Gets this one up, and Perez gets that ball up and out. Elevated on the outer part of the plate. Perez did not miss it. She ties the game at two. Well, that's what makes the firecrackers so strong is that they give up a two spot in the top of the fourth. They come right back here in the bottom of the fourth and even it up. A pitch up in the zone. Look at the way that she's going to go straight through that ball and just drive it from high to higher, punches it out of the park. So outstanding hitting by Perez to even the score up at two apiece. And for that fan out there, we didn't see that. You, you <laughs> caught that. You caught that. No drop. <laughs> no drop. I think uh, dad, all, all of our official dad, scorers here that. They scored yeah. that. Yeah, that was a catch, not a, not a drop. This ball popped off the bat of Nicole DeWitt, just from foul ground along the third base line. Hauled in for the first out by Madison Yanetti. Well, not, not to pour any vinegar in that there wound. There goes. Pretty good read on it, though, really. Yep, I, I, no, I got that. I'm good. Oh, he, oh, he didn't keep it. <laughs> oh, you know what he tried? I mean, he must be a glory fan. He tried to feed it back in to throw her out. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad thinking. And now the medic's checking on his the tarples, metatarples, <laughs> finger bones. Here's a bouncing ball in the infield and safe. And now working for second base is Eisenberg. And Eisenberg has two on the air. Kaylee Eisenberg. Or check that. My mistake, Sammy Vandiver. Flip that around. Vandiver is the batter. DeWitt out on the pop-up moments ago. Now Vandiver hustles down the line on the loose ball. She's going to take two. Lynch just unable to make that throw over to first. Mm -hmm. Good job of getting in front of that ball, but the throw just offline. I think it's so important. So many middle infielders, second basemen especially, like to to flip that ball over sidearm. If you have time, go over the top. It's a much more accurate throw. You know, we see a lot of elite athletes throw sidearm at times. And if you don't have a lot of uh, time because a quick runner going down the base, there's nothing wrong with it. But here you take a look at this here. You can see the way that she just goes sidearm. And look at that. That's just not the best throwing position. And it, there's a lot of inaccurate throws that come out of that sort of a throw. Coming over the top is much more accurate. I always recommend young athletes do that. Uh, when at all possible. Vandiver takes advantage, gets to second base. Wester will bat. And let's check back in with Amanda. I'm in the firecracker dugout in the first base, or down the first baseline. One put down, sacrifice successful. Throw out from five to three, moving the runner over to third base, Amanda. And I asked Amanda Sanchez in the dugout, who has a home run and is seeing the ball extremely well. I said, what's what's Danielle's change of the approach at the plate? And she said, just keep hacking. We feel like we're seeing the ball extremely well. And she herself said she's been seeing the ball so well in this tournament. And it's clearly paying off and showing off here in this game. But their approach right now, just keep it simple. Nothing super specific, just keep hacking. Tony Rico conversing with our plate umpire, Jackie Crafter. I didn't see exactly what it was. He's checking something on the, checking something here on the bunt. But mm. she immediately comes up and calls it foul. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, and that is being enforced. So the runner heads back. Vandiver had moved up to third on the sacrifice. I had uh, written sacrifice in my makeshift book here. Yeah, hold on, now they called her out. That's what it was. So they sent the runner back and uh, yep, got it again. It's the second time it's been called today. So it was not, I thought it was a dead ball and they were sending the same batter back. But instead, Wester is out, take the sacrifice bun off the board. And Vandiver stays out at second base for this at bat by Nicole Bates. <laughs> runner on the move, this ball lifted to left and it will settle as an out into the glove of Morgan Turcoli. But we're evened up at two runs apiece. Perez with the home run, tied going into the fifth. You see Kleiss line as a pitcher here in this contest. Great to have this big crowd around the field. I think some of the players who've been here before, I wouldn't say they're spoiled by it, but the nice thing is when you come here, you can expect it now. This just happens every year. People yeah. pack the place, and it's uh, there's big energy. Well, it's a great pl place to be during the summer if you're a softball player. Everyone looks forward to this tournament. 
about Taylor Van Z. We saw her earlier make a play that she didn't love. That one was rock solid. Fields it cleanly, steps up, and fires a rocket to Blanco. And that at bat, some substitution is going to start moving into the mix for the glory. That was Carly Hazlip, who got her first at bat. Grounds out 5 3. Van Z to Blanco. This ball is blasted through the right side by Eisenberg, who will beat the throw from right field. Eisenberg is safe on the hustle. Turbeville was the scheduled batter, and she gave way to Hazlip, so that's who Hazlip batted four moments ago. And now Eisenberg on base with a clean single. A pitch on the outside corner, and Eisenberg just drives it the opposite way, lets that ball get deep in the zone. You got to love these young kids being able to hit that outside pitch so efficiently the opposite way, but a great hustle down the line to make sure she does, in fact, get the base hit. So with one out and one on, first pitch is chopped. Bouncer nicely played, and the force out at second base is converted for the second out. Let's jump back down with Amanda Scarborough. Well, Eisenberg, who's the righty who got that hit, was actually on the first pitch. And remember, Kevin Shelton said that he wanted his right-handed hitters to make the adjustment to hit early in the count and that the pitcher was throwing them away early in the count. So way to go up there and make an adjustment. The first strike that you see, you're able to go with it. Be the righty to make the adjustment. And defensively for the Firecrackers just now, good footwork by Nicole DeWitt on that bouncing ball to get the force at second. Again, doing her work early to be in a good position to leave that ball quickly from glove to out. Running and safe down at two. Moving into official scoring position is Zimmerman. Important base there with two outs in the top of the fifth. The go-ahead run now out at second. And the leadoff batter, Taylor Lynch, has walked and reached on an error to third base. Chance to put her team back on top in what's become a seesaw now. Blanco fields it fair and records the third out. Good work by Blanco to come and get that in fair ground and take the easy stomp on the bag. Firecrackers clean here in the top of five. Looking to go back on top with the bats. And our thanks, of course, to the field crews at Christopher Fields and all across the Metro Denver area who support this 100-plus field tournament, Sparkler and Fireworks, but always a pleasure to produce the TV games here at Christopher Fields. The, the crews, the, the local folks do a great job of putting on a good show. Got the bases painted red, white, and blue. Got the big star in the outfield. And America. They, and they chalked a, chalked a city logo behind home plate, which is fair enough. They, they deserved a little real estate there. That's a lot of chalk. <laughs> There's your blue bag. That's third base you're looking at. Continuing in the circle and getting a pop-up on the bunt, Monique Garcia still pitching and still being caught by Aubrey Turbeville batter here for the Firecrackers leading off the bottom of the fifth is Alyssa Horechko and Alyssa her first time up singled was fielders choiced out at second base but Horechko one for one in this game would like to set the table as the go-ahead run in the bottom of five she'll run through swing through strike two we're at this two to two point in the fifth inning now and we talked about the 9-0 score when Glory beat the Firecrackers recently, but let's get this pitch on the board, Michelle, and then I'll get your thought here. That ball hovers up and out of the zone. What would you say at this point, if you're a competitor in this game, you know, this one doesn't really count toward the official tournament standings, but it's on TV. The juice has got to be flowing now, <laughs> and the synapse has got to be popping at this point. Yeah, well, it always counts when it's on TV. It doesn't matter even if it's a, <laughs> you know, a record within the tournament or not. You, you know, it's a lot of pride. And I think any time you play a team that you've beaten nine to nothing or that you've lost to nine to nothing, it just uh, adds a little bit of height to the meaning of the game. Uh, you know, Coach Sheldon for the glory said that, you know, the Firecrackers are an amazing team. They're not going to be very happy with the outcome of the last event that where they played each other and knew that the Firecrackers, a lot of that, those nine to nothing scores uh, were self-induced errors. Strike three and an out recorded against Horechko. Good first out by Garcia. And that will flip the lineup, send it back to Taylor Van Z. Here's that strike three pitch. Excellent spot just off the plate, tails up just a little bit. Great rotation, looks like a screwball just running away from Rechke. That's even more scary in slow motion, the movement, the <laughs> yeah. spin on that, the seam work. Yep. Here's a ball 
Rip down the left field line. It'll bounce foul, and Van Zee will come back to the box. Taylor Van Zee today. Uh, debated single and a fielder's choice. One for two in the contest. Monica Abbott for the Firecrackers. Two, there are two runs, solo shots mm -hmm. for the glory. They got their two runs in the fourth inning on some base hits, a single, a double, and moving the ball around, another single. Got the thing, the two runs. As, you look, as you've looked at both teams today, uh, I guess if you had to prognosticate, who do you feel like has, is in a better position here, or is any either team in a better position? You know, I think they're both in a really good position to take the lead. I thought the Texas glory kind of came out a little bit slow. They, were, they watched a lot of early pitches in the – early pitches from their hitters and that were good that they could that they could put the barrel on the firecrackers came out a little bit more aggressive and now they're being a little bit more patient so it's going to be interesting to see who's going to come up in those clutch moments van z with a nice reach swing just serves it out over third base and a base hit so taylor is on with one out she goes she keeps her front side in and just kind of pokes gets her barrel to the ball doesn't try to do too much Gets it into left field for a single. Michelle, that's a different kind of going with the pitch. We saw Perez hit the home run going where the pitch was, going out over right center. But that's another great example of just going where they're at with the pitch, using it. Yeah, that's a screwball off the plate, running off the zone. It was probably a ball anyway, but you get enough of the barrel on it, and you just dump it over the left side of the infield. If you're a lefty, it's going to put you on base every time. Blanco takes a strike, walks out, takes a look down at Coach Tony Rico. Blanco, another open stance. Dives into this pitch and sends it to right. Ball hangs up in the Colorado air. And another out recorded. Caught out in right field by Madison Montgomery. Two down now. And the home run hitting Amanda Sanchez. One for two today with that first run of the game for either team on the first inning blast. Sanchez back in there now with Van Zee at first. First pitch to Sanchez, gets the outer edge, 0-1. Monique Garcia has a very nice presence about her out in the circle. Yeah, that's a great job by Monique Garcia being aggressive on this first pitch. You know, Sanchez has made two, had two great at-bats, so it's really important to be aggressive early, try and get ahead, but not give her anything too good. The last thing you want to, to do is you know, put too much barrel on the ball. Pitch one outside, pitch two inside on the elbows. Sanchez stood up straight by that pitch and now back to the outer edge. Sanchez, both of her swings today have gone the other way out to the left center gap, the home run and the fly out. Garcia with those two outs on the board facing the number three batter right here, the Firecrackers, heart of the lineup. And Garcia fields her spot, lining it back to the pitcher for an out is Sanchez and Garcia handles her defense. And that will get us through the fifth inning and keep us uh, tied at 2-2 as we go into the sixth. Pretty solid swing, but Sanchez into the glove of Monique Garcia. Five innings in the books. We're playing seven here in this National Power Showdown. Groups for both of these teams. We've got Madison Kettler stepping in. Madison was out of the box on a bunt in the first inning, called out, and the strikeout victim in the third. Kettler... Now, every time now you get a leadoff batter up, this is the fun part of the game. Sixth inning, glory, only two shots left here. And Firecrackers, only two shots left. It's great to be that leadoff hitter. And she's the number two hole in the order, so she's, I'm sure, very comfortable in this role. Well, yeah, when you know you're a table setter, it's all about doing your job, getting on base. Doesn't matter how it is, if it's a walk, a hit, hit by pitch. Kettler, Baylor is in her future. She saw it off to the middle. Good charge and strong throw. And more impressive shortstop play from Nicole Bates. Nicole Bates just has this ability about her. You can just tell her presence of the field, ability to go get the ball. Middle infielder. Yeah, what a strong arm she has. You know, we've continuously seen her gun out some people with some pretty good quality speed. Um, really quick transfer out of her glove and trusting her trusting her throw. Yeah. You know, throwing so important in softball. Good thing first baseman Tara Blanco is uh, is courageous and bold, man, because she's that thing's coming. That what would 
Do you have any guess what the MPHs are on that throw from shortstop? <laughs> <laughs> that thing is coming Gosh. strong. And yeah. it's, it's short yeah. range. She's got a strong arm. Blanco, no idea. Blanco takes the throw and Good probably still feeling the tingle in her palm from catching that out, but a great first out to get. And now this pitch fouled back 54 miles per hour on what ends up setting up an 0-2 count now for Megan Kleist. There's some rocket for you. Yeah, look how she stays through, but look how she comes through that using all of her shoulder in her back hip. Great you can snap. you can tell when the ponytail gets all the way around from one side back and crosses over and does a full full face and back of the head cover. You're whipping. That's how you know you use your whole body. Now that your hair hits you. Michelle, you <laughs> talked about the sidearm versus the the over overhand and the control of the ball. Right. Also, in terms of you know a lot of players when they throw a sidearm, they'll open that hip and get off to the to the left side with their hip and to the right side with their arm. That's right there. What you just saw is probably what you're talking about as far as how to do it right. Textbook over the top. And it just uh, makes the ball, the line of the, the ball, so much more true, easier for your teammate receiving the ball to be able to catch it. So with one out and a 2-2 count, here comes the pitch from Kleist. Sends it up and hit hard, but directly at second base. DeWitt is there for the catch. Ariel Ortiz lines out. Ortiz singled and scored her last time. This time will not reach on the L4, two down. That means it's time for the number four batter, Morgan Tercoli. Tercoli has hit no fielder's choice and grounded out to shortstop. Or flipped that. I, we, they changed batting order on me. It was Tercoli grounding out to short and then singling. So it was, it was Tercoli who singled and scored. Before the game, they were going to bat Tercoli three hole. They moved her to four in a little pregame decision. And so it's Morgan's turn here in the four spot. She's the one who brought that run home, the very first run of the game for the glory back in the fourth inning. Bounce this one to first. Tara Blanco is right on it. And a nice sharp top of the sixth inning for Megan Kleist with a ground out, line out, ground out. Firecrackers heading to the dugout, looking to jump on top in the bottom of the sixth. Matchup, National Power Showdown. The number two ranked Firecrackers heading to the bats, battling against the number five ranked Texas Glory. And it's been a good one. Thad Anderson, Michelle Smith, Monica Abbott, Amanda Scarborough here. Perez. Pops one up to left. That is an elevator shaft at Colorado Rocky Mountain High. Pops high, and it's fielded in left for the first out. And it looks like Tercoli has continued in left field, just double-checking the jersey number. When Morgan turned around, she makes that catch on Perez. Perez homered her last time up. A big out right there for the glory. Nicole DeWitt. Played a pretty nice second base today. Has a chance to hit here. She's 0 for 2 with the pop up and a strikeout. 57 miles per hour on the ball one delivery. DeWitt will climb back into the box. Glory coaching staff wanted to mention Kevin Shelton and Aaron Weintraub here in Colorado heading up the effort for the glory. This ball is popped foul back over home plate, right over our heads. That is a metal roof above us. <laughs> Thank goodness. Nice loud noise on the crash down. Thanks to Kevin Shelton and Aaron Weintraub for handling the duties here in Colorado and helping us with information as we prepared for this game. And for the Firecrackers, head coaches Tony Rico, Don Menard, Norm Perez, Jim Trott. And they mentioned Kenny, the catching instructor. He's an electrician and yeah. handles the catchers. So uh, He's actually caught me a couple times. Yep. Worked, has been, worked with the Nat USA national yeah. team in the past. Been a bullpen catcher. And also Kevin Shelton from the glory. There's Tony Rico coaching third base right now. Kevin Shelton, when I talked to him too, he mentioned part of the staff in Colorado that's getting things done here. Mentioned his wife, Lynette. And she's not officially anywhere on the on the duties list, but she just does everything is, yeah. is what he said. So <laughs> Kevin and uh, wife Lynette enjoying the game together. And here in Colorado, getting after it. Loved uh, Kevin's comments that he gave us. And uh, he just had fun with it. It's, it. Sounds like he's enjoyed the process. Loves the privilege to coach. And so he's just kind of, yeah, didn't quite say it in these terms, but it looks like he's just sort of living the dream with getting a chance to work with the Glory program. Here is the strikeout. DeWitt swings through it, and Monique Garcia gets a couple of quick outs in the bottom of the sixth. She will now face the bat of Sammy Vandiver. I think that Garcia is actually throwing better as this game has gone on. She's going back to that screwball again, that pitch 
lifting as it moves away from the plate. So that pitch has been very effective to the firecracker lefties. Vandiver one for two in this contest. She's going to drop this ball down the line and down, and she'll head for two easily into two. Vandiver with the blue double and with two outs, a threat mounted by the Firecrackers. See the location of this pitch on the inside corner. Vandiver is just going to loop it the opposite way, does a really good job of just putting that ball on the green. Pays attention, play is in front of her, so she sees it go down, squibble away from the defender, so she usually takes second base. Good bat control. She shifted the grip as the pitch came in. A little hand shift and placed the ball right where it worked out for two bags with two outs. Tied at two in the bottom of the sixth. Allie Wester, chance to cash in the go-ahead run. It's a, an end of the bat change up and fielded, handled out there by Taylor Lynch. So hustling through the bag, Wester, she is out and we go to our seventh and final regulation inning, tied at two. And it's down to six outs, three per team in the seventh inning. Extra innings would break out if we got to that point, but each team's gonna have a shot to avoid the extras with something here, two to two the score. And the glory. First chance to set the table. This ball is pulled. Clean single. Madison Montgomery. Montgomery three for three on the afternoon, just gets a pitch on the inside corner, drives it into left field, excuse me, right field. Just very aggressive. Heading over to Oklahoma State, so I'm sure that uh, Rich Willigman and <laughs> company will be very happy to have a hitter like that stepping on board. And now the first baseman, Daniela Chavez. <laughs> Little bunt on the left side. Great bunt, might beat this, gonna beat it. Nobody at the bag. Short game pays off for the glory. Love how she takes that bunt with her. Definitely surprising both the first baseman and the pitcher. Here she goes, she opens up, takes it with her, hustles the entire way. To give her team a chance. Big smile on the face of Daniela Chavez. I imagine Pro she probably. doesn't get a lot of <laughs> base hits on a bunt, so it's always fun when you're you know, a power hitter to throw down a bunt and get on with it. Yeah, probably not at the top of her toolkit, but uses it at a great time. And on base, now replaced by Morgan Grappe, who we saw earlier as a runner for Chavez. So Grappe running at first. Out in front of her, Madison Montgomery at second. This pitch is sent outside. Perez has a chance. Diving back safely is Montgomery. So the pitch out, and Perez had a shot, but hesitated just a second there. The runner was out far enough. You almost had to wait and see which way she's going to commit. A really good job of being patient, both athletes. Yeah. Perez getting the ball down there and Montgomery getting back to the bag. Little mess going on here. Yanetti squares, bonds to third. Good play by Van Z. take the out, but successful is Yanetti on the sacrifice, moving two runners into scoring position, second and third with one down. It's fundamental softball, get them on, move them over. And you have two opportunities to try and get in a go ahead run here for the glory. A nice single swing by Madison Montgomery to lead it off and back-to-back -back bunts. One for a hit, one for a sacrifice. One out, second and third. Kevin Shelton will talk to his batter, and the batter who's going to step in here for the Texas Glory is Presley Galloway. Galloway gets a chance to hit here in place of Aubrey Turbeville. And now Tony Rico will visit the circle, talk some defensive strategy. Uh, it's getting fun now. It's you know yeah. it's, it's pretty cool when you showcase all this talent. We spend a lot of the game talking about who's going to school where and the feats they've accomplished throughout their careers. But now we just throw everything out the window and start just hammering away, playing some softball. The Texas Glory sitting on this 2-2 tie here in the seventh. Both their runs came back in the fourth inning as the bats broke out. The Firecrackers, they had Perez hit the 
blast that tied it up two to two. So when you look at the Firecrackers runs, again, first inning Sanchez, home run, fourth inning, right after the Firecrackers had gone down two to one, it was Genevieve Perez answering with that blast and making it a 2-2 count in the top of the fourth. It was a ground out that started the half inning in the fourth for the glory, but then single, double, single. And like that, lightning. Beautiful night tonight, by the way. No lightning in the skies, yeah. but <laughs> lightning on the field from the glory gave them those two runs. And now they're sitting in good position. One down, runners on second and third, and Presley Galloway batting. Galloway, a senior to be in high school, 2015 grad, takes ball one. So for the firecrackers, you can see middle infielders are going to be pulled well in. Top of the seventh inning here, try to cut down that run at home if the glory try to score on a infield hit. Bouncer in front of the plate. That is going to come to the plate. Safe is the call. Flying through the tag. Montgomery flies down from third. Kleist had a shot, sent it to Perez. Montgomery gets around the tag for a safe call. Well, Montgomery just has great presence of mind. Look at the way she's going to be quick and go to the back of the plate. She gets past the catcher, Perez, and is able to get the hand on the plate. A very slow developing play defensively for the Firecrackers, and they're unable to get Montgomery and the glory go on top, three to two. So Galloway batted the spot that Hazlett batted in a few innings ago in place of Turboville, and Galloway gets just enough done with the bouncer in front of the plate to send her teammate home. It's Montgomery on that great slide and on the replay. I was wondering on, on live if she got the plate. Looked like she was able to get the fingers to drag the backside of the plate as she flew through. But agility is yeah. her force, stepping over that bat, making sure you get to where you need to be when you need to be there. Even just a late slide on that, too. Yeah, the other great Lost thing she did, sl slapped longer. the plate. Instead of trying to reach early and, and slide the hand through the dirt, she just said she passed it, slapped it. This ball is going to come to the plate. Got a runner hung up. And diving back safely, bases loaded. So Van Z made a pretty good play there to come to the plate. Had time to get the runner breaking, but diving back in safely is Grappi. And another solid call from our umpiring crew. Right on top of that. So the glory in business out. Bases loaded, just one out. Infield still continues to be in for the Firecrackers. A couple of fielders' choices back to back from Galloway and Eisenberg. But no outs recorded. Firecrackers doing what they can, but the ball just ending up in spots that are not allowing for outs. Nice pitch on the outer edge by Kleist. Three to two, our score, top of the seventh in a seven inning ball game. Erica Zimmerman, her third at bat of the day, her third plate appearance. And she has got Texas Glory teammates everywhere out on the diamond. That pitch just misses at Genevieve Perez. Thought maybe if you look a little longer at that one, you might change your mind. Jackie Crafter, the plate umpire. Little off speed pitch here. One and one count with one out and a one run lead for the glory. Chopped, coming to the plate for the force. Back to one, bam, bam, four, two, three. And that will keep things at a plus one for Texas glory. Big double play by the firecrackers and now they're gonna need a run. Quick to second, Perez, the quick pivot. The firecrackers get off the hook. Three consecutive plays then. Balls batted that the Firecrackers defense came to the plate. That's three in a row where the play was first made to the plate. Yeah, just a, a really good job defensively trying to get the out, unable to record the out the first two times, and, uh, and then come up big with that double play to limit the damage. Yeah. The huge slide by Madison Montgomery getting around the tag from Perez was the go-ahead run, and it looked like more damage was available. But what a great double play execution by Nicole DeWitt at second with the rocket throw to Perez who then quickly gets it down. Now we got a chance to tie it here. Runner gonna be on, will she think two? She will think it, but won't do it. For the Firecrackers, that's Nicole Bates hitting the opposite way. Solid single. 
And Nicole Bates taking the pitch on the outside corner. And he's driving it down the line. Oppo, really good job. So the glory will confer at the circle. They've got the one run lead. But the firecrackers have the leadoff batter on. It's Nicole Bates now one for three, a couple of flyouts to left, and this time goes to left but keeps it on a line and is rewarded with the single. So at the top of the seventh, Glory got their leadoff batter on. Firecrackers do the same. And that means it's time for Alyssa, Alyssa Horexko. One for two today is Horexko. Stands tall with the hands. Laps at it, sends it foul. Crashing in from third is Madison Yanetti. Yanetti playing uh, at the midpoint. About, yeah, she might be 35 feet away, <laughs> maybe. Field for the glory, well up, left side. Strike there. I guess Horexko must have known as a striker heard the, the audible call because after the ball went through she almost offered again later like yeah okay yeah that was that was probably a pretty good pitch good work by Monique Garcia glory pitcher to get two strikes on the board just barely got a piece foul it back and stay alive Alyssa carries on in the box with the top of the order due behind her Taylor Van Zee standing on deck Talked about those coaches a minute ago. Wanted to make sure I mentioned Tony Rico when he gave us some information. We asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up, and he said, I'll tell you when I grow up. <laughs> and the response from Kevin Shelton of Texas Glory was someone people can count on. A soul who demonstrates integrity, grace, a giving spirit, while demanding and inspiring excellence in those around me. And we talked about it, but both these programs led by quality individuals who do it the right way. Here's a ball knocked through the infield, and runners are safe. And just like the Glories, top of the seventh, now the bottom of the seventh, the first two are on, first and second, nobody out. Horexko comes through for the Firecrackers. Well, Horexko is just going to get a pitch on the outside corner with two strikes. All she's looking to do is just punch it over the infield that's pulled well up. I almost think in that situation that Ortiz, the shortstop, has pulled in a little bit too much. If she's on the line, if she's two steps further back, that's an easy pop fly out. Positioning just so important with Taylor Van Zee now in the batter's box or there in a second at the top of the order. Taylor, we mentioned earlier, heading off to University of Washington in the fall or late summer. She wrapped up her high school career this year and will step on to the college ranks. And now this has turned into a, a convention. Yeah. Conferences breaking out everywhere. A little bit of strategy here with runners on first and second, a lefty, lefty up, you know, obviously ideally defensively, get a ground ball to third base or shortstop, get the go ahead run and even maybe have a chance at first yep. for a double play. So from so, a, a pitching perspective with what you've seen today for Monique Garcia, what are you going with and where are you going with it on Taylor Van Zee? You know, I'm going to pound the outside corner and I'm going to take my shortstop over into the five, six hole a little bit just in case she gets a enough barrel so that, you know, she can protect that hole. Michelle, any different diagnosis from your? I, I would probably continue to work the outside, but I, I think we've become too predictable on the outside corner. You got to throw a pitch underneath the hands once in a while. Um, with no outs, excuse, yes, with no outs, I think this obviously a situation where you know, try to move the runners up into scoring position. One ties it, you got to get that one, but then potentially you got to think about winning it here in the bottom of the seventh if you can push a, a fourth run across. Defense again conferring. Taylor Lynch, the second baseman, came across and said a few words to her shortstop, Ariel Ortiz. In tight at first is Daniela Chavez. This ball rides in and will be fouled off. And that's the inside pitch she's talking yeah. about. You can't, you know, it, and you can see the way the firecrackers are leaning over the plate because they're expecting the outside pitch. So when you come back inside, it's going to make it that much harder for them to hit because they're not looking for it. And that's just what Monique Garcia wants. She wants that foul ball on that, when, on that bun attempt, you know. Looked like Van Zee might have given her a little extra look after that pitch too. Like, what, what was that? You know, my chin, Van Zee will take that pitch for a one-two count. Yudetti. In tight at third, Madison Yanetti playing in again. 
And I mentioned at first base, Daniela Chavez also in. Here comes the one, two, nobody out. Just barely got enough to keep it foul and keep the at-bat alive. Van Z on 57 miles per hour from Garcia. The team down by one. Sitting in a nice position here. Garcia's pitch. Fouled away again. Garcia spun one up there at 41. Pulling out the kitchen sink now in this at bat. Yeah. Van Z with two strikes doing a really good job of just getting rid of that ball. It's all you want to do when you're a hitter in that situation, especially with runners on the bags. You want to make sure that you can try to get something down, move your runners up. Productive outs. Again, fouling it away. We talked in, at the start of this game about Taylor Lynch, the leadoff batter for the glory, getting a nice, long, multi-pitch at bat. And now Van Zee finishing it off in the bottom of the seventh, the leadoff hitter for the Firecrackers. Seeing pitch after pitch after pitch from Garcia, waiting for the mistake or just the narrow miss from Garcia. Yeah, and this is where Monique Garcia, ha she has to come up big for her team. They need to get one out here, and she's in a good position to do it. That ball's going to sail foul and just along the fence line. Long run, no legitimate play available there on the pop. So Van Zee again putting the ball where nobody can get to it and earning another pitch. Taylor traveled here from California with her Firecrackers team and brought along mom, dad, grandpa, and aunt. Got, got the whole uh, rooting section in the crowd. And I'm sure everybody, you know, you've seen Taylor in a lot of big spots. And it's a pretty cool spot right here to be in. A little pressure, a little stress, but. A lot of fun. One, two pitch. Van Zee pays off, drops it in front of the center fielder. Runner held at third, bases loaded. Taylor Van Zee, a solid single over shortstop. Firecrackers down by one, nobody out, and bases loaded. Van Zee just peppers this ball right into the gap. Actually, really good position by Zimmerman, the center fielder. I thought there was a possibility she was going to come up and yeah. make that catch, but a little bit of topspin on the ball dives down. So Zimmerman doing a good job of keeping the ball in front of her, not letting it get to the fence. That would have for sure ended the game. So good defensive job by the glory. Yeah, and I saw a double play coming just like yep. you. For a second there, it looked like Zimmerman was going to get there, and Nicole Bates read it yep. and was gone. She was off the bag. If that ball's caught, that's a definite double off. Absolutely. But dropping it down just at the front edge of that red, white, and blue star in center field. Taylor Van Zee, what a great at bat by the leadoff batter for the Firecrackers. And now with Terra Blanco up, Firecrackers sitting in prime position to walk off with a National Power Showdown win here on CBS Sports Network. 56 miles per hour from Monique Garcia. We see Blanco, the future Wolverine. There's a pitcher here, uh, that long at bat, a lot of good pitches thrown by Garcia, and you, you lose that battle, but there's still a bigger war going on. Yeah, it's not over. You're still up by one also, so I was going to say you got to come to the plate. I guess you don't have to come to the plate. No, you, you got to go where an out is. No, you, you're, you're, they're going to come to the plate because you can tell by the way the defense is set up for sure. They've got to come home, I think, in this situation, try to turn that double play that we just saw the firecrackers in last inning with. So the middle infielders are tucked way in, the corners are in. We'll take a look at it right there. You can see how far in the, the infield is. It opens up opportunities now for the hitters to try and punch it through. But the defense in a good position to be able to try to get that out at home. He's deflating as that base hit was, though. You're still on top. So even yep. if you just knock something down, keep it on the infield, yep. flag one and step somewhere on a base and get an out, you're still not going to lose this ball game. But yeah. it feels like you almost went behind or went to a tie on that base hit. Although it didn't change the score, Van Zee might have changed the game. The Firecrackers advantage. That pitch does get the edge. So a couple calls. That bad earlier, I remember Blanco also got a, a tough call that she stepped out and took a second. Didn't say anything to the umpire, but just did one of those. I'm going to go refresh for a minute over here and just got another one that she might not have agreed with, but she'll step back in. See this off the off the pitch deliver the single. Here comes the play to the plate. Throw coming. Out at the plate, we're tied at three. Firecrackers still at the bat.
Well, great job of Lango to take this ball the opposite way, waits on it, it's an off-speed pitch and just punches it right past the infield. And an outstanding effort coming up. Look at the throw, the great defensive play by Tubaville. And the runner from second, you can see the way she's gonna try to score. And the tag applied to the leg. The firecracker is pushing it, trying to end the game on that base hit. Out in right field, looks like we're seeing, you know, let me double check for you, be sure we get things straightened out. I think Madison Montgomery is still out there playing right with the throw. Yep, yep. it is Madison out there. And she came up through a, a missile right on the line. It was Horexko diving into the plate. She was tagged out, another good call at the dish. As we've had several bang bang plays, a lot of tag plays and fly through plays. And that keeps the game from ending as Horexko sails into home. Oh, I love the way, yeah. too, that Tuberville, the catcher, just has her foot in the bag, forces Horesco to the end or the back part of the plate. Yeah, she, she, Tuberville, she just kind of stays back to the plate, where, as you saw, the Firecrackers catcher, Perez, she was a little bit more out in front, out in front of home plate, you know, forcing the runner to take two or three extra steps, and sometimes that makes a big difference in a bang-bang play. Aubrey Turbeville, the catcher who just made that tag out as she stands or sits behind Amanda Sanchez for this at bat. Says her personal saying, it's actually her mom saying to Aubrey, rub some dirt on it, suck it up. She sucked that throw up and applied the tag nicely to Turbeville to keep this game alive, 3-3. Firecrackers still feeling good with runners on second, third, and one out in their three, four batters now position to hit Amanda Sanchez one for three today with the home run that started off the scoring Sanchez a chance to end it and I don't care who you are pitching I don't care if you're Michelle Smith you're Monica Abbott you're Amanda Scarborough it cannot be fun to throw to Amanda Sanchez just the way she looks in the box the way she attacks the ball I think I'd uh, uh, you got first base open well exactly I was just gonna <laughs> say first base is open I might would be putting her on this ball shot to short, bobbled, coming home with it. Not in time, Firecrackers. Victorious in the National Power Showdown, 4-3 over Texas Glory. Slight bobble by Ortiz allows Van Z to come in with the winning run for the Firecrackers, but a great game all the way around. I thought it was fundamentally very strong, some good hitting. It's a great forecast of what's to come. A lot of these elite athletes. Amanda yeah. Sanchez, the final swing of the game. See that little bit of a bobble yeah. by Ortiz just allows enough time for Van Zee to get down the line. So firecrackers come up victorious here, bottom of the seventh with a four to three victory. Firecrackers four, Texas Glory three in seven innings. Firecrackers win it in their last bat, the champions of this year's National Power Showdown at the Triple Crown Sparkler Fireworks. Tied 2-2 into the seventh inning, Texas Glory. One run in the top of the seventh. Firecrackers two runs in the bottom of the seventh. Victorious and Amanda Scarborough joins Tony Rico. Tony, you're trying not to lose three in a row to Glory. What was it about the mentality of this team in the seventh inning that came across with the win? Well, they were just trying to execute the play in the game the right way. But honestly, I mean, all the respect for Kevin Shelton and his team. They're awesome. And we're just happy to be part of this growing brand of softball. I mean, the crowd is going crazy for both teams, and it was just a lot of fun out here. So it happened to work out our way. I mean, they got a ground ball. It was an out ball, but this game is full of mistakes. You never know. Could have went either way. It's a great ball game to be part of. And Megan Kleist in the circle for you, getting the win. Always learning, always growing. What is it that you saw out of her that just she hung in there, all seven? Even keel. You know, great composure. Uh, they sat on her outside pitch for a couple innings. She made some good adjustments to mix it up a little bit. And uh, this is about getting her experience. Like I say, this might be a big deal for a lot of people, but these kids are going on to a pretty big stage after this level. And so we're here to get her the experience, and I'm really happy with the way she kept her composure. And what do you love about this Colorado tournament? What makes it so special? The environment that Dave King and Triple Crown create around here and the All-American Night here with all of these kids screaming, um, honestly, we're pretty fortunate for what we get to go through as a team, but I think this is my favorite night of the year. Honestly, it's a great thing to be a part of. Congratulations. Thanks, Amanda. 
Congratulations to the Firecrackers and to the Texas Glory. A great show tonight at Christopher Fields in Westminster, Colorado. Thad Anderson, Monica Abbott, and Michelle Smith capping it off after Amanda Scarborough did that work for us on the field. And Monica, it started off in the first inning. Sanchez hits the home run to get the first run on the board. Sanchez finishes it with the last run on the board. And in between, we had all kinds of stuff happening. Your observations on tonight's activities. You know, what a great game overall. We had some great plays defensively, some diving catches from the Texas Glory. Monique Garcia continued to fight all the way through, and that shows a, a lot of heart and a lot of determination from these young pitchers after giving up so, some home runs. And even not the same same with Morgan Kleiss. Young pitcher gave up some runs, but still fought all the way through the game. Michelle, your thoughts? Well, I just love both these programs. I mean, they're coached by great men. I think that Kevin Shelton does a really good job with the glory, and obviously Tony Rico with the firecrackers. These kids are well-educated, they're well-schooled, but they know what to expect on and off the field, and you know they're building quality people. We're going to see these kids coming up in the college game in the next couple of years, and that's what I love. Well, we love watching all these talented players play tonight. Our thanks again to both of you and to Amanda for your time with us, and we'll be right back here in a little bit on CBS Sports Network with the All-American Game. Tonight, it's the Firecrackers of California picking up the 4-3 win over the Texas Glory. Excitement around the park, fans packing the stands, coaches leading the way, and players with mostly smiles all night long having a great time playing fast pitching Colorado. For Michelle Smith, Monica Abbott, Amanda Scarborough, and our entire crew, I'm Thad Anderson. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. The Sparkler Fireworks National Power Showdown is produced by Triple Crown Sports in association with CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Firecrackers win it 4-3. to three.